Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Ask an Otaku, where I am squooshed, but fortunately Miniman is not. And hello, Miniman, welcome. Hello, I am reasonably squooshed, but not in a squooshy, squooshy way of squooshy, 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 3DS, 3DS squoosh. Mm, there we are. So the topic for today is uh, fan service. Fan service then and now. Uh, some folks in the chat room were suggesting we talk about fan service and how it's changed over time. And as always, folks in the chat room, feel free to call out your Skype handle, and we will try to add you into the call, and we will start this whole big, wonderful chat thing. Um, and uh, meanwhile, I thought we'd, we'd, we'd start talking about that. Um, I mean, fan service has changed in a lot of ways, kind of, but in a lot of ways it's kind of the same. Um, I, I guess I, I said the big difference is that you know, we didn't have like fan service shows uh, back yeah. in like the 80s and 90s, and, and now we have shows that are kind of centered around it. Strike witches! So, um, uh, you know, uh, that, that is certainly a change, and I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, is that, a, is that a change for the good or the bad or the indifferent? I don't know. Yeah. No, no, it, it's one of the things that's all, like, you know, you can keep saying how it ruins a series at like High School of the Dead, which I still disagree mm. they ruined the series, but, um, I mean, you know, it got in the way, but, yeah. um, personally, it's, I don't know, it's something I've sort of learned to ignore completely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't really say about the history of fan service, because mm -hmm. A, I just watch weird animes, and B, I don't watch much old stuff. Yeah. Um, or much new stuff, ironically, I've sort of just hang around the 2007 area. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, in terms of fan service, I mean, you know, I've sort of got used to it. I mean, I watch Freezing, and I enjoy that yeah. show a lot. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's... It, it's just a case for me as, nah, it's there, but, you know, yeah. whatever the animators want to do. Plus, it gives us something to joke about on ONV every week, so, <laughs> hey. this is This is very true. I wonder, I mean, it's, it's um, in a lot of ways, I think fan service has evolved, where, yeah. you know, we don't get as much um, fan service that kind of comes out of nowhere. No. Um, we were talking about this earlier on in the chat room, that uh, original Macross is kind of famous for the fact that there's this sequence where um, two of the characters get lost together, and so they set up a shower, and so there's this shot of a girl showering. And it, it adds nothing to the plot or anything, um, you know, beyond what else is going on there. It's just like, okay, we didn't need that. There's a scene... Well, it's freezing. There's like a shower scene every two seconds. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Um, and that's the thing. It's kind of like you, um, you know... Now, if you're going to do fan service, it's like, you know, you, you make a series where you're going to have shower scenes, where you can kind of yeah. go for that stuff, instead of having it be in the middle of a serious mecha series, for example. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that fans have really done bad is sort of help the stereotype, really, here mm. in Britain and stuff like that. And, you know, I mean, there are all these arguments of, oh, no, what if, you know, Fruits Basket had fan service or mm. something? Yeah. Um, giving it away. Um, <laughs> but... I mean, when you think about it, you know, yeah, if Bruce Bosk had fan service, mm. that wouldn't be great. But the fact is, it is usually how it's implemented. And in the end, you know, there are funny shows that just make fun of fan service. I mean, um, sure. say Skyaku and Domo used it to mm. hilarious effect mm -hmm. by basically saying that we're about to give you fan service and just take the piss out of you. <laughs> um, you know, and it, it, I don't know, it, it's just an annoying topic that sort of comes up because you know, whenever it sort of comes up, you just go, Queen's Blade, High School of the Dead, ha, ha, ha. Right, yeah. Um, well, we don't have to do that. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's definitely changed. So why don't we bring on uh, Brad and uh, sure. see what he has to say. Do Brad, do, 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 do we'll bring him on. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, uh, you know, it, and that's the thing, is that High School of the Dead, you know, is meant to have fan service. That was kind of part of the deal going in. Um, so I'm, I'm not as horrified by that in High School of the Dead as I am in other series, which is kind of, kind of pointless. In High School of the Dead... Hello, hello, hello. Hey, hey Brad. Uh, is my audio okay? It sounds kind of weird on my end. Um, sounds okay. Alrighty. Right. Uh, I just had a small point on this. Mm. Um, from what I've seen, and I haven't seen much of the old anime that had fan service... There's there's a there's a difference that kind of moves along a timeline, and that is, as you move on, 
breasts get bigger and bigger and bigger. True. <laughs> yeah. And um, it becomes more and more obvious. <laughs> yeah, and I... I, I There's an exact correlation to as Katie Price uh, is on the media more. <laughs> It, it it is interesting. I mean, that that has become more. And I I wonder if part of that isn't because of like the Gynax bounce, you know. I wonder if it isn't because you know it, it's more obvious that you're you're doing fan service when you have someone with with big breasts as opposed to smaller ones. I don't know. It might be. I, I mean, back from what I've seen, you get you get like the 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 cleavage shots and stuff. Yeah. But you don't you don't have the. Um, basketballs just sort of <laughs> waving around uh -huh. in every shot. Yeah. And yeah. The thing is, there were sort of then there were sort of more sort of sensors in terms of what you could do. I mean, um, for example, if you tried to post panty sock and got a belt, nah, then you'd mm. be screwed. Yeah. I mean, you'd a be hated, b be screwed, and c I'd still love you because I think it's the best anime ever. <laughs> um, one of them. Uh, panty sock and got a belt's awesome. Mm. But yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, the fact is that it has got to such a point, though, that there is a show dedicated to making fun of it. True. I mean, the show dedicated to being a huge reference to everything else ends up making fun of it by actually being called Panic Off of the Garbell. Mm. And it's a great show. Yeah. Yeah. Best ending ever. <laughs> so Zan has something to say. So let's bring him on as well. See, what, see what we get. We get there. We're just creating O and V at this point. That, that, that is true. <laughs> come on, come on, chat room. Ask an otaku. It's O and V. <laughs> okay, so phoning Zan. But yeah. Phoning, calling. And, 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 uh, um, yeah, and of course, then you got stuff like, uh, oh, what was the, 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 the panty shot anime? Where, like, like, every other shot is a panty shot. Um, Powerful? No, um, they're actually, it's actually a franchise. Um, uh, oh, was that the one that came on G4 late at night, the Nocturnal Emissions show? No, no, it, it wasn't hentai, it was like a, it was like a James Bondish series, but everyone's a girl. Um, Curse is you, No, um, I'll have to look it up. Um, um, Everyone's wondering, I'm just trying to badmouth Curse it, Suji, because everyone keeps saying it's like Phantom, so I need to prove the Phantom's better. <laughs> So then, what's your point? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, my point? Yeah. Okay, uh, I just wanted to say that um, uh, if we're talking about fan service, we need to talk about Gynax. Because Gynax are the mm. kings of fan service. True. Because not only did they invent the Gynax jingle and um, uh, relied on other stuff other than the penny shop, they they know about the otaku, uh, what, what's the word we got? Fetishes. Yeah. Uh, if you remember Neon Genesis Evangelion, uh, mm. the episode where I'm. Um, uh, Asuka had to go on the volcano. I haven't seen that episode. Okay, well, okay. basically, they basically had to modify her suit to um, uh, the point where she looked like a big ball of fat. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if anyone knows that. That's a very particular otaku fetish. Mm. If you look on DeviantArt, you have tons of that kind of art. Yeah, yeah. guy knows. Weird. Uh, knows their audience mm. and uh, knows what the, knows all the little niches yeah. that they may or may not like. Um, but also, like obviously, I've been watching the uh, spring anime and uh, mm. glad to see that not too many people are relying on a penny shot anymore. Uh, uh, me and Brad watched this one show. I forgot what it's called. It's like Subasa or something. Okay. Only two penny oh. shots. Yeah. Nice. I like yeah. the fact that like sort of. Now it's sort of like only two. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but no, it is interesting. Just it's quick, quick moment. Oh, go ahead, Zan. Zan. Hmm? Cohen, Cohen, nine forty-six. The flashlight. Yes. Yeah. Did you look it up? Did you look it up? I did not look it up. I've been thinking about it for the next last like two hours. Oh, oh. hey, anyway, we'll deal with that later. Yeah. Um, I did not look it up, and Casanova <laughs> was legit. Yeah, I know. But the um, the anime Zan mentioned the Subasa one. Mm. It's interesting because it is a visual novel adaptation, mm. and they they are actually keeping the fan service out of it. Ah, uh, interesting. They, mm. they seem to be deliberately avoiding fan service. It's interesting. Uh, they do throw it in there here and there, but it's yeah. it's rare. Yeah. 
Well, you I still mean, get that though, like, because there are still sort of loads of um, anime companies wondering, should we keep the source material exact or should mm. we change it for our benefit? They know, hold right. the High School of the Dead yeah. went and tried to keep it as exact as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and even, even yeah, more in a lot of cases. I mean, there's a lot of sequences in High School of the Dead where it's, you know, it, it's, it's more than it was in the manga. Um, you know, and that's mm -hmm. just, that, you know, like you say, that, that, that's the, the question of, of how do you adapt something into an anime. Um, but you also get, you know, get stuff, and I, I think it is interesting seeing how these days we get stuff um, that just doesn't have really any fan service. You know, Wandering Sun, you know, appropriately, it's about middle school. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, lots of other things. And then you've you know, you got you know, Lucky Star. There's really no fan service in Lucky Star other than, you know, otaku references and such. Um, but there's really not, um, nothing. In fact, they even make fun of it in the, uh, the bathhouse scene. Um, and uh, uh, so you, know, you, have, you have that trend. But also, you know, I remember watching um, Serial Experiments Lane when it first came out and, and being stunned by the fact that it has no fan service. That just seemed, you know, impossible to me. And, uh, you know, it, it was done back then, certainly. Yeah. But the thing is, there are some bits where people just stupidly label fan service on the internet. Mm. I don't know how many people then... There are, I've heard people on um, forums mm. label Ghost in the Shell, the film, a particular scene involving a tank mm. somehow count as fan service. I was just like, oh, what you're right. the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Which, no, I mean, I, I, mean I, I, I understand that in, in, in the sense that it's kind of in your face. Um, it but, needs to be. It's someone yeah. ripping themselves apart. True. Um... Yeah, and, and that's the thing, is that there's, you know, there's, there's kind of a time and a place for it. I think I mentioned this before, there's a, a sequence in the original Tenchi OVA where they use the girl's nudity to reveal their character and how they act, and one is kind of blushing and one isn't and so forth. And that is a, a way of using it properly. Um, Sensible fan service, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if does, you will. Does anyone here remember the cover for one of the spring anime saying Goku Otome or Battle Girls Time Paradox? Yeah. Yes. Mm. It screams fan service if you remember the cover of it. Okay. If you if you watch it, there's almost zero. There is there's one character with um, a large set, but okay. it's not really shown off to that point. Mm, okay. Yeah. It screams fan service, and yet they're, they seem mm. to be avoiding it this season. It's yeah. interesting. This yeah. season it's has... Not, it's not from itself screams fan service with the fact that the whole show is incorporated with just girls. There's no guys at all in this uh, show. Ah, okay. Mm. Yeah, but like so far, none whatsoever. It's actually pretty somewhat dramatic. That is, that, that is cool. Yeah. Let me see if I can get some uh, a screenshot up here real quick. Um... I wanted something to annoy you. Um, anyone who was, you know, going to watch that 30 year old man anime she thought it would be bad. Yeah, it's funny. Oh, is it? it it's, yeah. it's very funny. Have you seen it, then? Yes, I have. Because I recommended it to you. Of course yeah. I have. And also, the it, computer they also it teaches Otaku the important fact of not squeezing the breast too hard. Uh. Oh, that is such a funny bit. <laughs> basic, basically, it's just. There's this brilliant bit in mm. which. Um, his computer screen. Basically, there's a god um, constantly following him mm. um, uh, until he doesn't become a virgin. Mm. And um, basically, at one point, he's on his computer, and then suddenly his mouse that just turns into breast. It just gets so weirdly funny. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just like, yeah, um, by the way, if you don't pleasure them enough for the next two minutes, um, they'll blow up. Oh, um, that. I'm just screaming. Yes. <laughs> Well, and actually, um, uh, Lanky Giza in the uh, the chat room points out the uh, the increasing uh, lowly fan service of the past couple of years, which, which certainly that has been uh, you know a, a bigger thing in the past you know five years or so than it was in the past. Um, and that is a little very true. That that is a little worrying. I mean, there was some, I actually was surprised to discover for those of you who have seen or heard of Double Zeta Gundam, um, the character of LP Peru, who's just like ten year old girl. Um, is basically a reference to the the big popularity of Loli Hentai manga at the time, uh, which would have been mid '80s, um, and uh, like she's not sexual at all, but they, they you know they, they threw in this this little girl kind of as a, a and apparently Elti Peru is sort of a, a rearranging of the of the the title of one of these hentai Loli manga, um, but yeah I mean it, it it's been out there but we certainly have have seen a lot more. 
of that lowly hentai recently, which I I, yeah. I still don't know what what that trend you know why that trend is big now. Do you think it's a mistake among anime creators thinking that when a guy says he likes younger women, they they just <laughs> think it's that much? <laughs> Mm. Wouldn't surprise well, me. That's, kind of that's a, a good point. Kind of in of Japanese, the word for young girl means mm. child, and the word for young woman, mm. really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's also kind of just a, a hypocrisy of today's society. Like, um, mm. uh, a little boy can hang out with all these older women, that will be fine as creepy. If uh, little girls hang out with a bunch of older men, that's creepy, and they'll get arrested. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's strange. So, uh, yeah. Doc wants to join us. Um... Dark, what's your uh, side handle or add you in? Yeah, because I, I still have this thing from the old. Um, we used to uh, at the end of a show do um, random sort of just get loads of fans together, just talk about crap while we we're watching the anime that you're on. Mm, there we go. All right, welcome, Dark. Hello. 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 <laughs> and there we go. Perfect, Perfect, uh, you know, Perfect image. Talking about fan service, so it's your time, Doc. <laughs> so, um, fan service. Go, you well, massive perv, go. Well, si I'll say um, fan service has been increasing since mm. these past years. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's because the Japanese people have um, no, um, what can I, like, there is no risk or... Con mm, um, um, consequences to the posting fan service since yeah. everyone pretty much agrees to it and when there's no risk they c just continue to grow, grow, grow and now they just spam um, <laughs> boobs now and <laughs> it's, it's increased to where we have Yosuga no Sora mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where, where anime has just became um, to the <laughs> Oh, to, um, the line of hentai. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and Kiss Exist. Mm, <laughs> Kiss Exist mm -hmm. was, oh. Yeah. That was that. Yeah. So I think um, Kiss Exist was more of an experiment to see how far they could go. It was a fair one. <laughs> yeah. Well, so kind of was, um, oh, God, um, Kono I still have nightmares. Today in Class 5-2, that was kind of an experiment to see how far you could, could get with that kind of material. Um... Freezing, kind of as well, to be honest. Um, you, you no, know, really. um, I mean, there's there's some I, fairly there's extreme not, stuff in there, I think. There's not nearly enough there to count as. Mm. Well, I mean, I, way, I'd then. say freezing is actually almost how dark can we go? Mm, it, okay. It, it get, I think I think it was almost a deter I think mm. it was doing the elf and light first scene thing uh, where it was yeah. trying to be a deterrent so that only older people will watch this <laughs> because only older people will be able to handle what. Yeah. How dark the plot gets. Well, I'd say the fan service in freezing was used differently. Mm. Not not in the um, typical um, anime way where. Apart from the end of shower scenes, so many. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shower scenes. Mm. You, you don't know. Um, so many. Uh, um, freezing uses it in a dark way. Mm. And not like um, Kiss Exist and your signal mm. Sora. Well, yeah, but in fairness, they are comedies. Mm. Yeah. I, actually, wasn't there... I was watching an anime recently where um, a girl takes, goes to take a shower, and either she or the narration explicitly says, and now here's a scene in which the main character takes a shower, because you have to have that in episode one. Um, you know, nice. It just seems like it's that way. Actually, I mean, a, a good example of, 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 I think, the way fan service can be used well, um, Occult Academy, where there's a scene, I think, in episode four where the main character, she's, um, various occult powers are coming after her. And um, mm -hmm. there's a scene where she's in a shower, she's taking, she's taking a shower, and then she's basically attacked by a supernatural creature while she's in the shower. And so she's... Not like a psycho reference. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Dun, um, dun, 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 and, dun. and so not only is it that, she's vulnerable. You know, she doesn't have any of her normal stuff around, and there is just something about, you know, a naked girl that has that sort of vulnerability to it. Which I was, you know... A, you know, it, it ramped up the, tens the tension of that scene um, to sort of give, give them an excuse to have a shower scene with the character. Um, and mm -hmm. again, to their credit, I don't think there's another, you know, uh, fan service scene on, on that scale in the rest of the series. 
Um, in, term, in terms of um, sort of like fighting and sort of weakness and stuff, mm. um, freezing has I think done the best scene where mm. it can do that. Mm. In which um, uh, you remember this, Do you remember the absorption scene? Uh, straight after the rainbow axel. Oh yes, yes. yes. <laughs> um, basically, um, a girl who is sort of supposed to be the prodigy of um, mm. everything, and who you have a sort of whole episode about her dreams and her futures and how she just wants peace. Um, basically, uh, a new type of Nova comes, and um, and basic and it basically makes a massive like bomb. Okay. And and it. Killed loads, and then sort of this one girl and a few others start surviving and trying to fight back. Mm. And then, um, basically, um, one of them fights, and then suddenly she just goes into the creature. Ah, and they're all really confused. And then suddenly, this girl just gets grabbed, this like really powerful girl, and starts mm. trying to fight it. Mm. And then, and then basically, just suddenly gets pinned to the thing. Ah. And then, because their powers make their clothes, uh, she <laughs> went all vulnerable. Mm. Um, but like, she looks so vulnerable because she just gradually getting absorbed. All you yeah. just hear is just screaming mm. and it is just so horrific yeah. and it's just like it's like oh that's what it is if she had clothes it just wouldn't have worked mm, mm-hmm. because it's that total like she doesn't look vulnerable in a super battle gear yeah <laughs> yeah no, it, it, it mm. certainly can be done well and it's actually one of the interesting things we're seeing is folks are now using fan service sort of you know for, for a point within the plot um, it's not like in I think it was Southern Cross there's a scene where they have the, uh, uh, the main character, who's a girl, she's sort of thinking through what's been happening recently and, you know, why things are happening. And, of course, she's doing that in the bath. So there's, like, a, a, a three- or four-minute sequence of her naked in the bath, and she, you know, she stands up and grabs a towel and so forth. And so it's just, you know, it's three minutes of just full nudity when she could just as easily been doing that, you know, clothed. Um, and it just, it just seemed really out of place. So, um, you know, I, I think now folks are a little smarter about how to use fan service, put it that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah, not yeah like that's in, definitely a good thing. Yeah. It's not like, like in uh, the 80s in which all the Japanese um, listened to a certain Kiss song called Love Gun and decided <laughs> to fire that directly into their own. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. that song, man. I mean, on a Kiss week, I love them. <laughs> I think they only use um, naked scenes in action animes mm. just because just for um just showing them that they're weak yeah. and they're vulnerable to yeah. attacks absolutely stuff. well it's just actions and comedies when you think about it yeah mm. like freezing's an action kisses a, Kiss is a comedy high yeah. school of dead's an action um you know i mean it's interesting like like you know i wonder if there's like a drama that does it decently or something like that I'm trying to um, think that's just a good point uh, Charlie just reminded me of um, Back on Ligatory. Mm. Well, actually, um, Cowboy Bebop. You know, Faye is fan service. Yep. So um, pretty much. You know, and, and it's done well because her character, you know, her character dresses that way to distract men. It, it, it is yeah, yeah. all part of her character. And uh, so, you know, she looks fantastic. Uh, and, and, <laughs> and, it's, and it's worked in very well. Yeah. Um, well, really, we should look at um, uh, Faye's um, uh, pretty much her phase up predecessor which is Fujiko from Lupin true um, yeah. yeah which I think um, Fujiko definitely did well with um, uh, mm. not only which, did she seduce the bad guys but she also seduced Lupin to get all cash <laughs> in his pocket <laughs> yeah like, I mean, she was a smart girl absolutely um, you know uh, yeah. Fujiko is kind of the original sort of um, heroine if you will in, in, in action anime um, mm-hmm. in, in terms of being you know, sexy and also competent and, and able to Keep up with the, with, with, with the guys. Um, and badass. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, then you also have, I mean, talking about fan service, I mean, are all of the, you know, the like, 120 shots of Kiki's underwear and Kiki's delivery service fan service? Mm, no, the granny panties. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I was re watching it recently and realizing how many times you look up her skirt. It, it is yeah, a little yeah. freaky. <laughs> Oh, it's just like in, in fairness, it is one use. I was going to say, in fairness, it is one robe. True. So it's not really skirt, as it were. Yeah. Was, yeah. That, that, plus, you know, she's sitting on the. I would say the panty shot. Um, yeah. I'd say the panty shot has been. Um, uh, has, they added way too much detail into um, panty shots now. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. If you see 
um, an anime like um, Oni Chan of Koto. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. They, they showed too much um, Kamuto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you yeah. get the shading and the creases and everything, mm -hmm. and it's just gone too far. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it is turning into sort of simulation at that point. It's kind of like, okay, yeah. you know, we all know what's supposed to be there. We really don't need every single line. Um, yeah. Although, again, I think part of that is the fact that anime, you know, they've always focused more on you know, the still image than animation. So I think it's just that now that we have digital animation, now that we, you know, they're not spending all of their time inking and painting, um, you know, they can now <laughs> spend more time on the, all those little special details. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, could you please make the action animation a little better first? I'm just asking. Yeah. At least freezing went on the action before it did anything else because mm -hmm. his action is awesome. Mm hmm But but yeah. Just, yeah, it gets to that it gets to that point where it's so detailed and everything, and they seem to be trying to make a joke out of it. And mm -hmm. I can accept fan service yeah. to a certain extent, but. When it turns into the equivalent of American bathroom humor, <laughs> yeah, it yeah, gets kind yeah. of old. Th and Pretty think, much, yeah. And I think that's one of the things we're complaining about is that you know th there's a difference between sort of fun, jokey fan service, as in um, you know even Gellman would do this occasionally, where there'd be a, you know uh, uh, the wind would fly up and everyone would see Oscar's panties, um, you know stuff like that. It was like okay, ha ha ha. It's when it's you know we're going to show panty shots and walking the folks naked and so forth every five minutes. And it's kind yeah. of like, okay, you know, you're not really helping. And I think that's one of the other issues, is that <sighs> this is not helping anime's image for anyone. Yeah, for those familiar with South Park, it becomes mm. the equivalent yeah. of um, Terrence and Phillips fart jokes <laughs> all the time. Yeah. 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 Pretty well, much. Yeah, I mean... Um, I hate Ray William Johnson. I can't believe I'm quoting Ray William Johnson. But in Ray William Johnson's song, um, <laughs> yeah, he did a song recently, um, and it was something to do, I think it was called, like, My Total Stereotype, and he was basically saying every stereotype ever. Mm. As soon as it got to Japan, it did, in fact, have all titles. <laughs> um, yeah, his yeah. stereotype song, it's I Think I Love You More Than the Japanese Love Tentacle Porn. Uh, yeah. 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 By the way, everyone, we're still accepting um, people to join. Just absolutely. Say, yeah, no, no, just say and join here. No, no, no. I am yeah, actually. I'm a, I can be called the community manager. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the things I want to talk about was uh, one of my favorite manga is uh, Gamblefish. Okay. Uh, like around chapter three, when it's first starting out, they begin throwing out fan service. And mm. um, however, here's the thing: uh, their fan service is it's like extra. Pretty much. Okay. It's like instead of just showing the girl like how she normally is, mm. they show her like in a fan servicey way, like okay. she's wearing a costume or you know. Actually, um, that reminds me. There, um, uh, uh, by Omega, they do that where basically you'll have a chapter and then the the uh, image for like the chapter title for the next chapter is like the main girl in a bikini, but like she's never dressed like yeah. that in the actual manga. Yeah, that's kind of like uh, what Gamblefish is. Like, the covers are pretty much all entirely fan service. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, like, fan service is really just, like, it's an eye catch. At least it can be used as an eye catch, really. Right. And, and Mr. Artist 24 is, I think he, he he's nailed the question on the head, is, you know, does nudity help a story? You know, it, it's... Mm, you know, depends. Ghost in the Shell, yeah, but I don't really count as, like, fan right. service. Right. You know, it, exactly. Like, it's the same with Tenchi. You know, there, there, there are points where you can do it. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. But I, I, I think there are a lot of cases where it's thrown in there just to, to be thrown in there. And I, I think, and I, I, I've seen only a little bit of it, but like Strike Witches, I think, is a good example, where it's kind of like there is a lot of fan service in that show. Um, mm. And you know, there, there are a lot of camera, unnecessary camera angles, I'll put it that way. Um, yeah. And they just, you know, it, it feels like, you know, uh, I understand the show isn't trying to be porn, but there's also kind of like, well, we didn't really need to go there. Yeah. I, I think it might be too broad of a way to put it, mm. but um, something like artistic nudity can help a story. Something like fan service, as we define it, cannot. Mm. Yeah. Well put. Yeah. yeah. I think fan service means kind of superfluous nudity or mm -hmm. sexuality. Mm -hmm. 
I still think yeah. sort of the best thing a fan that was ever has to be Devil May Cry. Woman comes on, Ooh. does one bit of fan service, mm. like on I think it's like the third yeah. episode, and then Dante just kills a yeah. demon in front of her and just goes, Stop being such a slut, it's not doing you any favours <laughs> <laughs> uh, before getting himself covered in blood. Yeah. Oh, it's cool. Mr. Arter twenty four actually he's absolutely like Kiki the Metal Idol is a great example of a show that absolutely um, where nudity is very important because you have characters who um, well, I'm not going to get into it for, uh, for spoilers, but, you know, um, where showing characters in that vulnerable state or in that, that kind of state is very important. Um, and, yeah, and, and, and sometimes it can, it can be done sexually. I mean, there's a scene where there's a girl who has um, uh, basically been knocked out, and she's kind of on, on a slab, and this guy walks in, and he, like, unzips her, the, the thing that she's in and begins to fondle her breast. And, you, you know, suddenly he becomes creepy, evil guy. You know, that just pushes you over the edge. And it, it, it's, it's very important. There's really no other way to get that across. And it, it, it's, you know, no dialogue. It just, that tells you everything you need to know. That, I think, works great. But you got to be, you know, you got you to gotta use it right. I just want to disagree with Higgis Smashy here, saying mm -hmm. that uh, Alpha 9 used it too much. For mm -hmm. me, Alpha 9 is the perfect example of when it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I was actually going to add to that. Um... Nelson lied. If you if you take the very opening scene, mm. oh, I think the um, the the nudity mm -hmm. is used to show just how strong she is. Yes, true. She's she's in such a vulnerable state, and yet mm -hmm. she rips everyone apart. That's just right. how strong she is. Well, the thing is, it almost just shows that sort of she has this ex like she has this sort of um, exterior sort of power of what's going on around her, but she yeah. is just completely. Mm. <laughs> uh, just, oh, okay, sorry, there's a problem with school. Um, I was wondering when... Oh, it's uh, W. But she's completely weak, just mm. in terms of just like mentally. Physically. Okay. I mean, the entire series involves around one mental weakness, and that's guilt. Mm. Yeah. And, 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 it's all very true. Yeah. And, and lightsabers in the chat room is absolutely correct. This is also a Western perspective. You know, Japan has yeah, a very different yeah. view on nudity than we do, so... There's also that, mm -hmm. that they just don't see panty shots as a big deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Dan Dan oh, the, the great joke of um, Dan Otoko. I think you saw her panties for 0.3 seconds, <laughs> and then you just go, oh! <laughs> Kita! That's yeah. such a good song. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, when, when you grow up in a culture which has shared baths, you know, you just have a, yeah. you just have, have a very different perspective than, you know, than we do over here as to what nudity means. Um, mm -hmm. But there's still a question of whether it's you know useful or not. And obviously, a lot of times fan service, you know, it's not there because they just, you know, because it doesn't matter. It's obviously there to get people's attention, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I think that's going to be it for us for this week. So uh, thank you all for joining us, and uh, we will do this again in two weeks. Hi, yeah, man. Here, you might want to copy and paste this into Otaku too. Oh, nice. That's a good point. Welcome yeah. to our Taku no Taku. Because <laughs> yeah. everything sounds better when you add Nyar at the end. There we go. All right, see you guys.